How are you? It's Kevin Kenny. Welcome to a brand new episode of In Studio. Our guest today is the writer, director, and producer of a brand new Netflix film entitled Like Father. Joining us now, Lauren Miller Rogan. Hello. How are you? Hi, I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm great. How do you feel with it being now out in the world? This thing that you've, I mean, it goes back about six <sighs> years, the story. We'll get into it. But mm -hmm. it, this has to be liberating in a sense. It feels so good. I feel like I've birthed my child and it's out there and people are getting to see it and they're enjoying it and telling me that they're seeing it. It's exciting. Now, uh, we're going to get into the story of the film, but what I love and what made me such a fan of wanting to go out and watch the film, which I did this weekend, is your story of persistence and how passionate you were from the moment you heard the pitch. And I believe the pitch dates back to a producer, Anders? Anders Bart, who's one of the producers in the movie. Yeah, we met at this point a little over six years ago, and he just had the kernel of the idea, a woman gets left to the altar, and her dad, who she hasn't seen since she was a little girl, shows up, and they go on her honeymoon cruise. Um, and I was not left to the altar, and I have a fantastic dad. Um, but, um, but yeah, I was really drawn to it, I think, because I really wanted to explore what a woman who was put in that situation would feel like, what she would go through, what her emotional journey would be. Um, and which is why I bugged him to write it, which I did, which took a little while. But then, yeah, I mean, honestly, to make anything, our journey is no different than most movies. Like, it takes a long time. Like, Hollywood is an industry where I think no is their favorite word. And sometimes they say yes, and that's great, and that's why we're here. But you hear no a lot more than you than you hear yes. Oh, I can so, imagine. And yeah. talking about the process there in Hollywood, how did this film uh, differ from maybe a traditional film? This is a Netflix film mm -hmm. as opposed to a theatrical release. Did anything? Is it pretty much just like the distribution is different, but everything else is the same? Well, it's pretty similar. We actually got Netflix on board two years ago in the development phase, like before we made the movie. So they were there from the very beginning. So different than like a movie that say premieres at like a Sundance and then is acquired by a Netflix or a studio. Um, so similar to a studio movie, they acquired it, they were part of casting, they were part of the whole production, um, and then part of the marketing, and, and now the release. It's just, it's the same thing, just sort of the modern day version of it, really, right? Yeah. Like, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. No, yeah. It's just out and they can enjoy it. You don't have to worry about, you know, box office numbers like we were saying. I know, I know. It's, it's, nice. it's nice. No, yeah, not watching box office opening weekend is nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk about how you introduce this character that Kristen Bell plays. You do it so masterfully because she's such a New York City workaholic. She can't even put her phone down on her wedding day. Now, mm -hmm. I, I grew up here. I know this person. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like I am this person. Yeah, you, yeah. you what, probably are. I am. It's what, fine. What made you want to write about that person specifically? I know you've talked about you know seeing a female lead in that role, mm -hmm. but uh, the workaholic portion of mm -hmm. it, where does that come from? You know, I'm sure a lot of it stems from my own self, my own love of my own job, and my own in inability to put down my own phone or my own work because I enjoy it so much. And that's the thing with Rachel, she's not miserable at her job. She really cares about her job. She's good at her job. And to me, that's a very real human thing. Like, we can love our work. It's okay. That's why I do what I do because I love it and I'm fortunate to get to do it. However, it's important to have balance. And like, like you said, like you go out on the street or like, just any in a restaurant or on vacations, like we're all like this. I do it. My husband does it a lot, and um, you know, and it's it's a thing that that is a, is a you know just a product of our society at this point, our technology, and it's great. But we have to learn to to put it down. And I think that I was really intrigued to take someone on that path to to go from like. I can have the balance of I can love my job, I can do my work, but I can also be a human being who's aware of the world around me. Right. That balance that I have not found yet, but <laughs> hopefully uh, Kristen does. No spoilers in the film. Yeah. Um, now, marriage is something that just personally, uh, to be a bit self-indulgent for a moment, it, it fascinates me. And, and this is clearly a, a woman that Kristen plays that is not ready for marriage. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, though, you're married in real life. How did you know you were ready to take that big leap? Oh, God. Honestly, I don't want to sound cliche, but like, I'm really lucky in my relationship and my husband and I, we've been together now over 13 years. Um, and we met um, one night, my friend was dating his friend and the four of us went to a party together. And literally just that night, I was like, wow, I don't think I've ever talked to someone so easily before. So it was quite early on when I was like, oh, I'm ready. <laughs> and it took him a little bit longer because um, I think guys have this whole thing in their head like I have to be able to take care of my family when I get married and it's like no like 
Marriage is a partnership. You don't need all your shit figured out before you enter in it because your partner is gonna help you figure it out. And that's the point. And so I think that like, I know a lot of guys who are like, well, I can't get married. And then they get married and they're like, well, that was stupid because this is the greatest thing ever. Even my own husband is like, I have no idea. I'm so sorry that it, I was I had the brakes on. Like, I don't know what I was doing. Cause like, we lived together after, from after a year and a half. Like, what were we doing? It was six years before we got married. But That's wild. I think marriage is wonderful. That's great. Well, For speaking me. of your husband, yeah. he is in the film, stars in the film, does a tremendous job, uh, perhaps never more so than in the scene where he turns down a joint <laughs> and says, I've never smoked weed a day in my life. I, I got a big kick out of that. It was almost like an inside joke there yeah. uh, for longtime fans of his work. But in all seriousness, he actually does a masterful job. I know. He's downplayed uh, the whole uh, aspect of working with his wife on set in, you know, in, in red carpet interviews that I've seen. But it had to be a little bit different than working with just any other actor. So what was it like? I mean, I don't know. I feel like he loves some of those guys just as much as he loves me that he's worked with before. So, uh, no. I mean, it was it was amazing. Like I said, like we're very lucky and we really like each other a lot and we respect each other and like my first instinct when he was on set was to be like, "I didn't need your help. I'm I'm fine. I can do it on my own myself." And then I was like, "What am I doing? I'm so stupid." Like, I think he's the most talented filmmaker that I'm lucky enough to know and like He's so smart and he's so supportive and like he was really supportive of my vision. Like I really knew what I wanted going into this and like he just really like was very respectful of the whole process and was there to give an opinion when I wanted one and was hands off when he knew that I was like, I'm tunnel visioned in, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, one of some of my favorite uh things to watch like in high school growing up were the uh, the bonus features on some of his movies where he and his buddies would just ad-lib. Were there yeah. any ad-libbing on set? I mean a little bit. We were in a pretty tight schedule. We shot this movie in about uh, 28 days I think it is which is you know large movies are much longer than that um, and so we were in a pretty tight schedule so there wasn't a ton of time. Little things here and there um, you know, little words here and there. I'm very like, you know, if someone, if a word doesn't sound right, change it. That's okay as long as the general idea is there. Um, but we didn't have those, have time for those like long, funny joke runs. Like yeah. that's, yeah. And that's just not really the tone of the movie either. No, no, yeah. not at all. Yeah. yeah, so it wasn't something we necessarily tried to do too much. Right. Kristen Bell's uh, story arc is, uh, the journey is just, it's so engaging and it's one that just uh, took me along for it, the whole movie. Uh, and there's all these moments throughout her journey where you think she's gonna figure it out. Okay, this is the opportunity for her to turn it all around and then it finally happens or eventually happens when the one person, it seems, that she says the one thing that she needed to hear, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, again, I don't wanna give anything away, mm -hmm. but that scene is so beautiful and the acting, of course, mm -hmm. is tremendous, Ugh. but the writing is so strong that I have to imagine that came from a real place and I'd love to ask you, mm -hmm. who was that person for you? What was that one thing you needed to hear at mm -hmm. some point in your life that? You know, it's interesting. I think it was actually a combination of things that I wish I could hear that I haven't heard. That sort of ultimate apology of like, I was wrong, it wasn't you, because of course, I. You know, like I said, I'm fortunate to have my dad um, in my life very much in, a, in an amazing, loving way. Um, so I couldn't put myself in that headspace, but I certainly have been rejected. I have been brushed aside and felt completely like it was my fault. And now that I'm older, I imagine that it wasn't, um, that it was all about the other person. And in this situation, it wasn't about Rachel, it was about Harry being a human being who made a mistake, who made the wrong choice and lived a life where he was living out that choice over and over again till it was the right time to remedy that situation. And you know, for me it was just about like putting myself in that headspace of what would I need if someone was coming to me with this big apology and that's that's what I came up with. Yeah. This, the film is about a lot of things, but one thing, a, a prevailing theme that I took away from it is that life does not give a you-know-what about our plans. No. And it's filled with unexpected turns. Mm -hmm. And I thought it just a fun little exercise to do is if you were to go back to 15-year-old you. Oh my God. And what you thought your life was gonna be like, mm -hmm. and then what your life is like now, mm -hmm. how would those two things compare? What, what's the most unexpected things about your life now compared to what you envisioned? Well, when I was 15, I wanted to be a fashion designer. Um, I had big dreams to go to FIT here in New York for fashion design, which I did for two years before going to film school. So that's a pretty big difference. I thought I'd be a fashion designer living in New York City instead of a filmmaker living in Los Angeles. So, but you know, but I definitely like, was the kind of kid with big dreams and never intended to take a conventional path and luckily had parents that supported that. And um, 
you know, and just really, I'm, I think my 15 year old self would be pretty psyched and wouldn't be too disappointed. I, you know, I wanted to sort of try to live true to what I wanted to do. And I feel like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm circling that. Yeah, yeah I'm close definitely. to it. Yeah. I've always thought that that's as funny as it sounds like that's like the ultimate mark of success is if like tween you oh, thinks yeah. you are like the coolest. I think you did a good job. I, I think if I went back and read my diary from those days, I think I would make that person happy. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, I want to <laughs> congratulate you on the tremendous work you and Seth do, and a bunch of people do, on Hilarity for Charity. Thank you. Ten plus million dollars raised so far. That yeah. That cannot be understated. It's yeah. It's just tremendous what you've done, taking something that is, of course, very difficult uh, and turning it into such an amazing, beautiful, positive thing. What is your eventual goal? If you can quantify mm -hmm. it at all, where do you want to take Hilarity for Charity? I'd like to cure Alzheimer's. <laughs> um, you know, I don't think Hilarity for Charity will raise the kind of money that cures Alzheimer's. I think that's the job of the government. Um, and they have stepped up in recent years. Um, not enough, but it's happening slowly. Um, my goal is to make Alzheimer's a part of the conversation. It, I want to tear away the stigma that makes people keep it a secret because they do, my family did, my mom insisted on it for the first few years. People still do that, they're ashamed of it. Um, I wanna tear that stigma down, it's why it's part of this movie, because I wanna make it part of the normal conversation. Um, you know, I want to take action on it. I want there to be treatments. I want to help people that are going through it. We have a, a grant program where we provide in-home in -home care to people who can't afford it. Um, I wanna be able to grow that program so that anyone who needs help in their home can receive it because it is extraordinary, ex extraordinarily expensive. Um, you know, no plans to stop on that side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh to close it out in, in somewhat of a full circle moment here during our chat, uh, you've said in previous interviews that you hope that one of the biggest lessons people can take away from the film is the idea of forgiving and moving forward. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. Now, I understand that at the time you wrote the film, it was actually a pretty tumultuous time. You're like yeah. dealing with your mother's Alzheimer's, of course, but then mm -hmm. there was also this pretty major falling out with a friend. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, just I personally, did. if you mm -hmm. don't mind me digging a little deeper it's here, okay. have you two been able to forgive and move on? Um, unfortunately, some relationships are not meant to last forever. Okay. And, you know, some people are in your lives for a certain reason, for a certain amount of time. And, um, and that relationship was, existed for a lot of amazing reasons. And, and now we are both in different places in our lives. Um, and it's, it was an interesting process, you know. Um, that time was a tough time where I had to sort of take a look at the things that were eating me away, but I was burying them and not paying attention to them. And it's why this script has some really sad moments and some really angry moments, because I was feeling really angry and really sad some of the time when I was writing it. Um, and so, yeah, the, the loss of that friendship was one that was hard to get over. And, and still is, it's, it's funny when you end a friendship, it's different than a relationship, you know, because you can't like sit across from someone and be like, you know what, I think we're better off as friends. Because that's, you know, right. and so it's it's a tough thing. Um, but I I really firmly believe that like there are people in our lives that sometimes for some reasons and then not. And I love that, and I love what it gave me. And you know, and and my mom's journey as well. Like something beautiful has grown out of something really awful. And I'm a firm believer that even the saddest things there can be light in there. And I learned that through going through that at the same time and push through to the other side and a lot of good has come from it. Absolutely, I mean this film came from this and in closing here I just have to say I think the best thing that a film or any piece of art can do is allow us to examine something about ourselves and better ourselves and Like Father certainly did that for me so thank you good. for making the film. Thank you for watching it. And it's available now on Netflix everywhere. Thank you.